Welcome to the Invite Health Podcast, where our degreed healthcare professionals are excited to offer you the most important health and wellness information you need to make informed choices about your health. You can learn more about the products discussed in each of these episodes and all that Invite Health has to offer at www.invitehealth.com slash podcast. First time customers can use promo code podcast at checkout for an additional 15% off your first purchase. Let's get started. Hi, Jerry Hickey here, nutritional pharmacist. Um, This is actually uh, episode two of a podcast where we're looking at the oral microbiome. And I said, hey, if you want to click on this, uh, I'll call it, you know, one supposedly healthy habit that's really bad for you and you should stop right away. (laughs) And that was um, gargling. So the oral microbiome and what we, what some people refer to as plaque that I call the biofilm, biofilm is a film made by microorganisms, is actually a healthy thing if it doesn't get too thick and if it has the right composition of good bacteria to bad bacteria. And we discussed all this in uh, episode one of this uh, podcast. And um, I also mentioned that dentistry and the dental industry has gotten it all wrong because it's kill, kill, kill. And I said the bad habit is actually uh, mouthwash, gargling with mouthwash. And if you look at some of the labels on mouthwash, it says kills 99% of your bacteria in your mouth, and that's a bad thing. Now, on one hand, the biofilm starts to re-engineer itself within 20 minutes after gargling. But that doesn't mean it's going to be the correct complement, the correct mixture of bacteria. So you want to keep it a good balance. I told you that the good bacteria in your mouth um, create nitric oxide, and we're going to be talking about that in the next episode, which is part of this whole podcast sequence. Um, It's a collection of, of, uh, of podcast episodes dealing with oral health, basically. And it's so fundamental... It's really the fountain of youth. It's really uh, core to uh, a wholesome, healthy lifestyle, good oral health. So the good bacteria create nitric oxide out of the nitrate in healthy foods, healthy foods like uh, lettuce and carrots and beetroot and uh, barley and things like that, healthy foods. And this nitric oxide makes up for the nitric oxide you're really not making in your blood vessels anymore because you need that for circulation, you need that for endurance, you need that for exercise, you need that for brain health and memory, you need that for the immune system and healing, you need that to kill off dangerous infections, you need that to lower the risk of cancers, um, a whole bunch of things. (laughs) It's more than that. So one thing the good bacteria do is they make nitric oxide. A second thing they do is be, by creating that microbiome, by creating that biofilm, that film on your teeth, it prevents uh, tooth sensitivity to like cold temperatures and certain foods, etc. So there's a lot more to that. And so the first thing I said, if you want a healthy complement to bacteria in your mouth, because there was always bad ones. I mentioned several bad, I'll mention more bad ones in a, a couple of minutes, but I mentioned seven, several bad ones in the mouth, uh, like... Um, one in particular can really increase your risk of Alzheimer's disease. It gets into the brain, it breaks down the ligament around your teeth, it gets into that little barrier between the blood vessels and it comes there's a lot of blood vessels, can travel up the fifth cranial nerve. Uh, that's a nerve that's involved with um, uh, facial uh, sensations and chewing and things like that. Um, it's called a trigeminal nerve and actually make its way into your brain stem, your lower part of your brain, and eventually into your hippocampus where a lot of memory processes take place. So it's not a good thing. So you want a healthy uh, microbiome, a healthy complement between the yeasts, the viruses, and the bacteria in your, in your mouth, the good bacteria and the bad bacteria, because they prevent the bad players from acting out. And I used an example of my one of my gardens where I grow vegetables. If the vegetables are really healthy and growing well, they suppress the growth of and the invasion of weeds. And it's the same thing in the mouth. If you have enough good bacteria, they keep the bad bacteria from multiplying too much, and they also keep them from doing damage. So in my opinion, dentistry has it all wrong. 
Because when you use those mouthwashes, it says, oh, it kills 99% of bacteria in your mouth, and that's, that's not a good thing because you're killing the good ones. So the first thing, don't use mouthwash. Just rinse your mouth with green tea. Green tea seems to ignore the healthy bacteria, but it doesn't like some of the bad bacteria. And by the way, that bacterium, which is singular, that gets into the brain is called P. gingivalis, which is a big player in, in uh, gum disease and um, just, you know, poor oral health. So you don't want to use mouthwash, just use water or green tea. Don't use antibacterial toothpastes. Um, uh, like things like sodium lauryl sulfate. Sodium lauryl sulfate is, is an issue. The sodium lauryl sulfate is, is a surfactant, so it's kind of like a soap, and it can kill bacteria, but it also ga damages the tissues in your, in your gums. So it's not a good thing. If you scrape your tongue, it, paradoxically, if you scrape your tongue, that's one way to increase nitric oxide production. <laughs> so that's interesting, because if you kill good bacteria, uh, it reduces nitric oxide production, and nitric oxide is basically your fountain of youth. Believe it or not, breathing through your nose, like when you're exercising, when you're walking, first of all, your chin is going to look a lot better. But when you breathe through your nose, you don't damage the pH in your mouth, and you don't make it more ap um, acidic, because the acidity will fuel the growth of uh, uh, gum disease, worsening of gum health. So that's a problem for people who snore at night and breathe in through their, their mouth. It does change the pH in the mouth. So try to breathe through your nose. And don't eat a lot of sugars. All kinds of sugars, um, uh, like sucrose, uh, like uh, lactose, uh, like uh, glucose, um, uh, uh, high fructose corn syrup, they, they fuel the growth of uh, streptococcus mutans. And streptococcus mutans leads to dental caries. It leads to tooth decay. In fact, that's one of the things that green tea inhibits. It, incre it inhibits the P. gingivalis and the streptococcus mutans for bad breath and gum disease and tooth decay. And uh, because the streptococcus mutans will take the sugars and convert them into acids, which cause uh, inflammation in the gums, but also tooth decay. It leads to uh, dental caries. By the way, the, um, you know, I, I, I told you before, um, um, the uh, porophyromonas uh, gingivalis, the P. gingivalis, uh, is involved with um, uh, rheumatoid arthritis and uh, bacterial vaginosis and lung conditions, etc. Well, um, the uh, streptococcus mutans is uh, involved with heart valve disease. A lot of people have undiagnosed heart valve disease, and it can be a killer. And this, uh, this particular bacteria um, can lead to uh, heart valve issues. A relative of uh, Streptococcus mutans, uh, Streptococcus uh, sanguensis, um, that can lead to bacterial endocarditis, an infect inflammatory infection of the heart. So it's not good. And I said before, these bacteria, like the P. gingivalis, is involved with Alzheimer's disease, um, and other issues. So, you know, you really want to control this. Now, what about charcoal? Like a lot of people are going, hey, I'm getting a charcoal toothpaste. Well, you know, you want the charcoal to have an RDA. RDA, people think of as recommended dietary allowance. Well, that's for vitamins and minerals, and micronutrients. This RDA is the relative dentin, uh, de excuse me, the relative dental abrasiveness relative dental abrasiveness. It's called the RDA. If you get charcoal, you want to ground up enough that it's fine and it has an RDA below 30 because then it won't be super abrasive and damage your teeth. So when you get a good toothpaste with charcoal where they've reduced the particle size of the charcoal below 30, um, it doesn't have a whitening effect. What it has is an adsorption effect. And that's a good thing, because that helps with staining of the teeth. What the, what the charcoal actually does, and it's charcoal made out of vegetables. You never want charcoal made out of animals. That's dangerous. You want charcoal made out of vegetables. It pulls the tannins out of your teeth. Tannins are these dark things. Like if you've ever seen water near a bunch of trees and it's stained brown, that's tannins. They're very tiny. And if the tannins 
stay on your teeth for too long, they work their way into the dentin and they will stain your teeth permanently. So the uh, charcoal, if, if it's the kind I agree with, a low RDA below 30 where it doesn't damage the teeth, it's not abrasive, uh, it absorbs the tannins and pulls them out of the teeth because the, tannin, the tannins are in very healthy foods. You get them in, well, I'm not saying red wine is healthy. <laughs> Alcohol is not healthy, but red wine has some good things in it. But like tea, black tea has tannins. Um, berries like, uh, like blueberries and blackberries have tannins. Cocoa and chocolate have tannins. I mean, they give color. Rhubarb has tannins. Squash, uh, red grapes, uh, a number of good foods have tannins. So the charcoal isn't really whitening the teeth, it's pulling out the tannins. Now, um, so don't use a, a toothpaste with sodium or oral sulfate because it damages tissues in the mouth. Uh, don't use a toothpaste with uh, the charcoal that's too large a particle size. Uh, don't use mouthwash because it's a killer. Just, you know, you can rinse with like a mild green tea or white tea, because white tea doesn't have tannins, right? It's low as tannin, and because uh, it's it, it's it's not dark, it's light, and it, tannins are dark. And uh, um, I, you know, it, it's a whole different conversation on fluoride. That's a whole different. That's a whole episode, I think. So we're going to avoid fluoride right now. There's some lawsuits by some dental associations. Uh, against the government and their mandate for f certain governments and their mandate for fluoride in the drinking water and and things like that. So, you know, it's, it's interesting what will happen with that. Um, by the way, the, uh, the other thing about sodium lauryl sulfate, which is in many toothpastes, not only does it damage the tissue when you gums, but it leads to canker sores. This has been proven in, in research. You know, the canker sores are those very painful sores in your mouth. What you do want in your toothpaste is something called hydroxyapatite. In fact, hydroxyapatite can basically replace fluoride. There's no perfect toothpaste right now. They're in the works. I can't tell you that there's a perfect toothpaste. Okay. But if you get one with hydroxyapatite and some uh, charcoal that's, that's a very small particle size, the hydroxyapatite contains a form of, a form of of calcium and other minerals that will help remineralize the dentin in your teeth, which is basically what fluoride is supposed to do. Now, so hydroxyapatite, calcium hydroxyapatite is good for your teeth uh, and your gums and your gum health. Don't use silver containing toothpastes, okay? People like to use silver. It was one of the original antibiotics, basically, because uh, it kills all bacteria and it kills all yeasts. And you're probably better off not using a toothpaste with powerful essential oils because essential oils, even though they, they taste great and, and they reduce inflammation and they're otherwise healthy, in your mouth they'll kill all the bacteria, the good and the bad. I mean, it's okay to use essential oils in your food and stuff like that, but I wouldn't use a toothpaste with essential oils and apply it um, directly to your gums. And once again, so far, there's no perfect toothpaste. So what about probiotics? Probiotics are healthy bacteria that have been proven to give you um, benefits. Now, the truth of the matter is there are companies out there using bacterial strains with really no research behind them. So you want, you want a company you could trust that makes good products, makes good probiotics. But probiotics can help with uh, oral health. They can improve your oral health. They can reduce the uh, risk of gingivitis and periodontitis. They can reduce your risk of tooth decay. They can neutralize the acids in your mouth that break down the enamel and dentin. Uh, they reduce the growth. They help inhibit the growth of disease-causing bacteria. They reduce inflammation in your mouth and gums. They help reduce the bacteria that cause bad breath. So what would examples be? Uh, Bifidobacterium animalis, subspecies lactis. So any probiotic with some of these strains will be good for your gums. So... Um, Bifidobacterium animalis subspecies lactis, which is one of my favorite strains of probiotic because it's also good for the immune system and allergies and things like that. Lactobacillus acidophilus, that's another one of my favorites. Lactobacillus acidophilus can resist a lot of different antibiotics and do well. It gets into women's breast tissue and, and helps get rid of toxins in their breasts. It's really good for the digestive tract. 
So lactobacillus acidophilus is also good for gum health. Lactobacillus ruderi is great for the gums. Uh, Streptococcus salivarius, that's a very good one. Saccharomyces boulardii. So there's not just one strain, there's a whole bunch of different strains that are good for the gums. Now there's probably a lot of other strains that are good for the gums though, uh, also, but they haven't been tested yet. So there's probably others. Fermented foods, because they're going to give you different strains of bacteria, like kefir. Kefir is a, a, uh, um, a fermented dairy product that has good bacteria, or kimchi. Um, prebiotic foods. Prebiotic foods are foods that feed good bacteria. So a prebiotic food could be a garlic, onions, asparagus, some of the whole grains. Um, uh, open the capsule once in a while and add it to some plain yogurt. That's what I do. I don't do it often. Uh, you know, when you, when you eat well and you exercise and you don't smoke and you don't abuse alcohol and things like that, and you don't gargle, the microbiome in your mouth will pretty much take care of itself, but I like to nourish it along because I'm older and research shows that the microbiome all over the body and the vaginal tissue and the breasts and the intestines and the mouth, they change with age. So I get, I, not only do I swallow a probiotic frequently and I, I switch between two different probiotics to get different strains. But not only do I do that, I, I, I tend to open one up maybe every four or five days and add it to some plain yogurt. I don't get like the candy teppy yogurt. I'll, I was looking at some yogurt labels, <laughs> and some of them had as much sugar as Lucky Charms. <laughs> I thought just not good. Now, uh, you also want nitrate uh, creating um, foods. It turns out that uh, some recent research is indicating that nitrate-containing foods are actually a prebiotic, like um, scientific reports in 2020 had a study like that, that um, certain foods uh, create the nitrates and the nitrates feed your good bacteria. But it doesn't matter because the nitrate-containing foods have other benefits, including supplying nitric oxide, which is great for your brain and your heart and your immune system and healing and all those other things, and reducing cancer growth and things like that. So what are nitrate-containing uh, foods? Beetroot and carrots. Um, I get the darker carrots, you know, like, like the black carrots and the red, the red carrots and the purple carrots. But the orange carrots are good, too. Watermelon has a little bit of nitrate. Um, let me think. Uh, certain grains, like uh, barley has a little bit. Uh, almonds and pistachios, um, mushrooms and tomatoes. Um, Lettuce. Lettuce has nitrates. So, you know, if you're eating a salad every day, you're helping supply nitrates to your body, which is a good thing. Because the nitrates, the good bacteria in your mouth are fed by nitrates, and then the good bacteria in your mouth take the nitrates and convert it into nitric oxide, so they're metabolizing it, which is more evidence that it's good for these bacteria. If they're metabolizing them in a good way, it's probably good for the bacteria. Uh, this increase is the nitric oxide uh, supply for your blood pressure, for exercise and endurance, for your brain, for your immune system, for healing, for the heart, for circulation, for controlling your blood pressure. Now, the um, the nitric oxide and 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 uh, acting as a prebiotic also inhibits some very bad players, some really bad bacteria like uh, Vibrobacteria, uh, Prevotella bacteria. Uh, there's a whole bunch of these. And, and the nitric oxide foods, they reduce sulfate production, so your, your breath is going to smell a lot better. So you don't need that minty breath thing that only lasts for a minute anyway and tastes terrible. It also inhibits uh, ammonia production in the mouth, which is very inflammatory. Uh, it increases the pH of the mouth, so it's not as acidic, so it's anti-tooth carry. Uh, so not only for your breath, but also for cavities in the mouth. Uh, the nitric oxide improves the bacterial composition of, of, of the oral microbiome in the biofilm, you know, what we used to call plaque. So what are you getting? Uh, you're going to get uh, strains such as Neisseria and Rothia bacteria. These are really good players in your mouth health. You want Neisseria in your mouth. You want Rothia bacteria. They're really good um, players. Interestingly, the nitric oxide uh, acting as a prebiotic, reduces the growth of fusobacteria in the mouth. So what are fusobacteria? Fusobacteria in the mouth are unhealthy bacteria 
that get into the bloodstream and go to your pancreas and have been shown to increase your risk of pancreatic cancer, but also get into the intestines and can cause colon cancer and rectal cancer. So when you eat these good, healthy vegetables, I mean, there's a lot of reasons. You know, they always talk about, oh, they give you vitamin C, and they give you antioxidants, and they give you all this and that. But they also create nitric oxide. They also feed good bacteria. They also help kill bad bacteria. So there's a lot of things going on here with a good diet. There's a lot of things. Um, we want to tackle nitric oxide in the next part of this uh, um, podcast uh, sequence. Because nitric oxide is made by the bacteria in your mouth. Your nitric oxide production starts to decrease at the age of 40, so it's really bad for you. Nitric oxide literally is the fountain of youth. And uh, um, you need the nitric oxide for your immune system. You need it for healing, to get blood and nutrients to, to an injury or a wound. You need it for brain health because you need circulation to the brain. You need it for circulation. You need it to control your blood pressure. You need it to prevent cancer but also you need it to prevent the cancer from growing. So that's why you want good bacteria in your mouth, that's why you want good oral health, and that's why you want nitric oxide. So the next part, uh, my next episode will be referring to nitric oxide. So thanks for listening to today's episode. Uh, you can find all of the Invite episodes for free wherever you listen to podcasts, or just go to invitehealth.com forward slash podcast. You can also find Invite on uh, what's it called? X? <laughs> used to be Twitter. X, I think it's X. Uh, Facebook and Instagram at Invite Health. And I want to thank you for listening. And Jerry Hickey signing off. I, I, I really would love it if you left a review and if you told your friends about these podcast episodes. I think I've given some good information. Have a great day. Have a great day.